For today's presentation, I will be discussing a 1E1 and a 1E3 post-pay pay telephones. I have both of these connected and I will demonstrate the process in making a call and what how the phone actually works. I will remove the upper housing and show a brief uh, view of the inside of the telephone. I have a monitor speaker connected to the phone line so you can hear what is happening. So you will hear the dial pulsing from the phone line side. It will not be muted so it will be a fairly loud pop. And then when I call a number and answer that number, you will hear the trunk unit split the line and provide dial tone back to the payphone as an indication that a coin deposit will be needed. yourself and save, especially during daily discount periods. The time is 3.14. That was an unanswered call to my Autocron time of day machine. The next call I make will be to a number that I can answer and then you will hear the tone. Now that the dial tone is cleared, I could have a conversation between that telephone and the number I dialed. Since this is a post-pay pay phone, there is no uh, system in place for refunding any money. So this was a relatively rare telephone in the Bell system. Most of your independent, very small mom and pop phone companies would be using post-pay phones, either Automatic Electric or Northern Electric. All right, I have the upper housing removed from the 1E1 pay phone, and we have the chassis assembly where this location right here, the upper housing, would plug into. This plug here connects to a 10A totalizer, which is set up for post-pay service. Then we have a 20-type coin mechanism, and below a 50B delay um, circuit. It provides uh, about a half a second uh, delay, I believe, uh, there's not much information located in the Bell System Practices on that unit, so it provides either a delay or a time pulse. This is only found in the 1E1 payphones, which of course is the rotary dial version. I have the 1E3 payphone in the video. This was a manual telephone. There's no provisions for placing a call from this phone other than talking to a live operator. These particular phones are beyond ultra rare in the world. They were used in Nevada out in the deserts where they had radio circuits uh, that were hotlines or ring downs. They referred to them as toll stations. And I have this 1E3 connected 
to a trunk unit that is connected to a 3CL toll switchboard. And you will see us making calls from this telephone through the switchboard. This is the inside of the 1E3 payphone. has the same chassis board, the same totalizer, the same coin mech. However, there's no electronics down here on the hopper. There is no need uh, for this. So when a person places a coin into the phone, it goes right through the totalizer into the hopper and you hear the tones that's being produced by the totalizer that the operator would be hearing in her headset. This produces a dual tone for the coin service. They did have the earlier 1A payphones had a single frequency oscillator and they quickly changed over to a dual tone oscillator people were able to defraud the single tone operator uh, or excuse me the single tone oscillator as in it was a simple tone to reproduce and they would take and record it on the tape player and then put it up to the transmitter on the handset and play the tone and the operator would not know if it was coming from the phone or from a tape recorder they could do the same thing if they could get access to the actual phone line and per place calls and record the audio from the phone line side. If I was to place a long distance call and wanted to pay for it at the phone, then you would dial zero to reach an operator and then they would set up the call to the person that you're calling and if they answered the phone then they would request the coins to be deposited for a three minute call so it could be a dollar fifty or two dollars depending on what the rate was for that time I will dial a digit three which were clear dial tone and then I would deposit some coins into the phone so you can hear what it sounded like uh, when the operator was on the call. You'll hear five beeps will represent a quarter, two beeps will represent a dime, and one beep will represent a nickel. Twenty-five cents. Ten cents and five cents. That would only be deposited if they had reached the party that you wanted to speak to. There's no mechanism for refunding any type of money at the telephone. All right, we're looking at the 1E3 manual phone. This phone does not have the ability to do anything other than contact the operator. 100% of the calls are being handled, in this case, at a 3CL toll switchboard. I do have an operator at the switchboard, so I will go off hook and tell them a number I would like to reach, and then they will ask for a certain amount of money, and I will deposit that to satisfy the operator. Now, normally the operator would put the call through. Once the car called party has answered the call, then they would put in the money needed to uh, satisfy the call. Operator? Yes, 3775111. Three minutes, sir. 
Hello, how's it going? Hello. Hi, can you hear me okay? I've got a speaker on in the background. Well, I just spent 50 cents calling you. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, Bye. I have the camera set up here at my 3CL tall switchboard. The 1E3 payphone is connected to a line circuit that is wired to this switchboard. I have a light that's lit presently, and I will point out where that's out on the switchboard. And that is lit because I've left the 1E3 payphone off hook. The telephone is in a different building than where the switchboard is, and I can only be in one place at a time. Then Jim will uh, plug in to that jack below the lamp and then um, he will place a call through. The previous call was a call that was made from the phone to the switchboard, through the switchboard, uh, through Asterisk and then into my step-by-step -step system and then it rang a phone in the house that my wife answered. The call setup that you heard in the background is what it actually sounded like in the the days that these phones would have been connected to a switchboard like this. So right now the phone is off hook and the light is lit. There is no common audible on these because these switchboards were staffed 24 hours a day, seven days a week and the operators would be trained to look for any lights in the off hook condition. We do have other lamps on the switchboard lit and those are outgoing trunk groups. Right now, this lamp is on a trunk that's available for an outgoing call, and we will not be using it. There's another lamp on the switchboard that you may not be able to see at this moment that is a camera outgoing trunk, and that's where the call will be placed over. I will reposition the camera slightly so we can see what's going on. So Jim is plugged in to the 1E3, and he's asking for the number to dial. And the number he's going to call, in this case, would be 377-5199. This number is not available through CNET. I have a speaker connected to the camera trunk so you can hear the tones that's being sent out to the toll office. You took too long. Yes, I did. Okay. Five. One, nine, nine. And the number that he dialed is busy, so at this time he would tell the person at the payphone that that line was busy. That of course, busy. they could hear that, and that would be the end of the call. And he would take down the cord after the person hung up. Because I'm not in the other building to hang up the phone, the moment he removed the cord, the light came back on because the phone is still off hook. This is set up to replicate the way it was in the uh, 50s on up to the very early 1980s. The particular switchboard we're looking at was in service until 1987, I believe, in Portland, Oregon. Um, and I've been thankfully able to get the trunks to make part of this function again. So for being a video produced in November of 2020, uh, this is as close to the real thing that we can reproduce uh, in real time in HD video.